Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Calgary Barbell. Today I'm super, super excited. Uh, I talked a little bit about some of the stuff that I had managed to absorb from the wonderful Connor Lutz in terms of my bench lately, and then I hit a big bench PR. And I told you guys that if that bench grip worked out for me, that I was gonna have him on the channel to talk about it, and uh, we'd have a little bit of a discussion. He goes through some coaching and stuff. So without further ado, here is a former IPF Open World Record holder giving us some bench secrets. Oh Jesus, no that's not. There we go. Hey, uh, my name's Connor Lutz. I'm a 74 kilo powerlifter in the CPU. Um, I've had the opportunity to compete uh, internationally at uh, quite a few world championships as well as a, a Commonwealth, which has been really cool. I got, uh, got the chance to kind of meet a lot of the, the high profile IPF lifters and, and kind of see parts of the world that I wouldn't normally, um, I guess, see if it wasn't um, for powerlifting, giving me an excuse to travel to those places. As far as bench press goes, um, my competition best bench press in the 74 kilo class um, is 188 kilos. Uh, that's a Canadian national record. Um, there's a period in time where I also competed in the 83 kilo class um, as kind of a, a bit underweight 83 kilo lifter. And my best bench press in the 83 class was 193 and a half. Uh, at the time, the 193 and a half was actually a, an open world record. I was kind of in the, the time before all the, the really freaky strong lifters started getting into the sport. So I want to, to thank uh, Bryce and Dylan for having me on the channel. I'm gonna have a chance to talk about um, the bench grip that I use. And it's something that I think Bryce has kind of found um, productive for him. Um, in general, the grip itself, I don't think is, is something that I've necessarily coined for myself. And I don't think it's something that I've really uh, specifically picked up somewhere. I know that there's been a lot of people that um, have done kind of discussions and stuff on uh, what's called the, the Jap grip. And I don't know that what I do is necessarily um, that, but um, for me personally, I'm kind of a, a tactile person. Um, I like to learn things for myself almost through trial and error and then rationalize those um, those findings, whether positive or negative, after the fact and, and uh, come to some sort of decision on why, what worked for me or didn't work for me. And then those are kind of things that, um, those theories are things I like to apply to, to other lifters and, and Bryce is an example of someone that was able to take that away and kind of make it work for himself. How I kind of got to the grip was um, through I guess trial and error with myself, but also kind of evaluating top level benchers. And it's very rare that you see a, a top bencher with, you know, a, a super vertical wrist position. And despite kind of conventional wisdom in, you know, stacking the, the wrist, the bar, the elbow, and all that stuff in the bench press, um, if you think anatomically about where the bar is actually sitting in your hand and where it is relative to the wrist joint and the elbow joint, um, striving for a super, super vertical uh, wrist position actually kind of puts the bar out in front of your forearm and having the bar out in front of your forearm is actually starting to decrease leverage in the bottom portion of your bench press. Um, it kind of, uh, in collaboration with a few other technical things, starts to turn the kind of bottom portion of a bench press into what would be like a, a lateral raised position. Um, puts a lot of stress on the anterior delts, not necessarily in a bad way, but uh, generally speaking, people are gonna be stronger in the pecs and triceps than, than uh, the anterior delt. Um, so what this grip has allowed me to do is, is get the bar into a position that allowed me to, uh, I guess, improve my leverage in the bench press off my chest. Before I go any further, I'll maybe explain what the, the grip itself is. Um, so generally what I'll do when I bench press is I'll uh, set up with my, my hands on the bar where I'm going to want to, to grip the bar as far as width goes. And I'll set up, set my back, set my chest position. Um, and then once all that's set and tight and I'm about to take the weight out of the bar, um, I'll just externally rotate my, my elbows and my hand a little bit. Um, so the bar actually kind of sits across my hand. So rather than um, grabbing the bar in um, you know, a giant fist position, um, I kind of just externally rotate the, the wrist and force my elbows kind of 
kind of to the outside. And uh, you can see naturally that kind of cocks the wrist back slightly. And something you can kind of do in order to build stability in the, the wrist joint here, so the wrist itself or the wrist strap, if you ch so choose to wear them, isn't, isn't handling all that load, is to kind of push the thumb back into the bar a little bit. So despite the wrist being cocked back, um, that little bit of pressure of the thumb into the bar is gonna create a little bit more uh, torque in the wrist joint and provide some extra stability. So despite the bar being rolled back, you're actually kind of you know, utilizing that old school cue of bend, bending the bar. So your elbows are, are forced out and the, the bar is kind of cocked in your hand, but then that torque in the wrist is gonna um, you know, create some stability in the forearm and ultimately the wrist and kind of protect the, the wrist throughout the, the press. Um, so once the bar is in that position, what it allows you to do is keep your elbow uh, under the bar, kind of slightly, just ever so slightly in front of the bar. Because um, ultimately when the bar comes off your chest, you're gonna wanna drive the bar back over your, your shoulders. Um, where the force in the, the bench press is actually generated is over the shoulder joint. So ultimately um, being stacked over the shoulder is where you are going to be strong. Um, Obviously, you're not gonna be able to bench press in such a position that the bar touches over the shoulder joint, so you gotta touch a bit lower. And as the, the bar comes off, you're gonna to wanna to rotate the elbows and put yourself in a position where the bar comes back towards your shoulders. Um, I think what the, the grip does is kinda of naturally allows the elbows to be a, a little bit more flared and, uh, and kinda of utilize the musculature of both the, the pecs and the, the triceps more effectively, in particular for the raw bench. I haven't um, you know experimented it with uh, the grip in equipment, um, but I think it's something that, that Bryce is gonna look at playing around with in the future. I'm curious to see how it um, works for him there. So in general, um, people that I think are gonna benefit from this grip is, like I said, uh, originally it's gonna be raw benchers just because I haven't had the opportunity to kind of experiment with people that, that train in a bench shirt. So uh, right, off the, right off the bat, I would say that uh, this is something that you know, you're gonna wanna look at if you're a raw bencher. And then something um, that's gonna help you or, or it's gonna benefit you is, is gonna depend on your width, width, width of your grip. Um, so a close grip bencher naturally is gonna be a little bit more flared in the elbow. They're gonna have to touch a little bit lower on their chest and uh, kinda forcing that flare in the elbow um, potentially could, could put the, the body in a compromised position. Um, something to be wary of. Um, generally speaking, a bit wider grip is gonna benefit more from this position. Um, it's gonna put your elbows in a bit more natural position when you bench. I hope that brief explanation of the, the grip that, that Bryce is utilizing and the, the grip that I use myself um, made some sense and was um, informative for you guys. Uh, something that I'd like to do is take Bryce through the, the positions of the grip and kind of demonstrate how um, I would use this position and this, this grip to benefit a, a lifter in the bench press. And hopefully that kind of ties together what I've been talking about and you can visualize um, why the grip kind of benefits putting yourself in an optimal position when you bench press. All right, so we're gonna kind of run through this as if I've never used this grip before. And Connor's gonna teach me as if he was teaching one of you guys. I got my bench jeans on, so I'm ready. All right, so before when I would bench press, I would take a pretty like neutral grip. So I'd get everything set. And I'd probably be about here with my grip. So from here, where would I, what would I start to change? The, the first thing I'd like to see before you even start moving your grip around and stuff yep. like that is just do one rep and kind of pause on your chest. I'm okay. curious to see what that position looks like. So in general, this position's pretty good. Um, you can see his elbows in a pretty good position relative to the bar, so just ever so slightly in front. But you can see he's kind of consciously tucking the elbows. Yeah. In this position, uh, kind of just like flap your elbows around in that position. You can see like it, there's quite a lot of free range there. Um, he's got a, quite a lot of movement in the kind of the shoulder girdle there and stuff like that. Yeah, both that kind of elevation and retraction of the shoulder blades. Um, something that consciously you want to be pulling those shoulders down. Yeah. And same with the, the elbows, you kind of trying to want to, you're trying to find this kind of optimal position Wondering. which he's found for himself. Yeah. But what you'll see is lots of people will over tuck the elbows so they'll be in this position. And then 
uh, in, in this position here, it becomes really hard to, to kind of generate optimal force because there's so much play where the bar is relative to the elbow and the shoulder and the wrist just isn't optimal as far as leverage is concerned. But you'll see people do the opposite where they're really flared and they're actually like, you know, way out or way, way behind the bar. And then in this position, um, if you were to imagine Bryce standing up in that position, it's basically a giant frontal raise, so it's putting a lot of stress on the, the anterior delts there. So ultimately what we're gonna try and do, if you wanna put it back in the rack, um, is kind of eliminate some of those variables by manipulating his grip. So if you wanna grab it how you normally grab it. Like now or? Yeah, grab it now how you would normally grip the bar. Um, set yourself up, uh, just keep it in the rack for a second. Uh, set yourself up on the bench like you would normally set up. So tuck your, your shoulders, um, you know, chest nice and high, shoulders retracted, all that good stuff. And then before you take it out of the rack, all I want you to do is think about internally rotating that grip in your hand. And then, uh, like we talked about earlier, just force the thumb into the bar just a little bit, which is gonna give you some stability in the wrist joint. Okay. Um, so you can see, you can pull it out. You can see the bar sitting um, a bit further back in his hand than it was before. Um, but ultimately, if you're looking at the, the angle of his forearm, the bar is actually sitting fairly in line with, uh, with his forearm, despite the fact it's rolled back in his wrist. Um, so now if you wanna bring the bar down where you would normally touch, in this position, um, I, I assume Bryce is feeling a fair amount of kind of tension in the forearm and the wrist, you know, yep. just from that, that torque. Um, and in this position, you can see now his, his elbows are significantly more stable, and that position that he brought the bar down is kind of instantly in an optimal position to press from. So he's not over tucking, he's not over flaring. The elbows are actually flared in this position, um, but you know he's not consciously thinking about flaring or tucking. They're just kind of where his body wants the elbows to be. And really, it's a, it's a fairly optimal position. They're actually kind of pointing out externally here. And then as he drives the bar back, um, the elbows naturally are gonna externally rotate because of how his wrist is internally rotated. So they come down to a tuck position, and then as they come up to lock out, the, the elbow naturally externally rotates because it's gotta match the angle of the wrist. Woo! I'm sweating. You pump? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a long isometric on the chest. <laughs> All right, guys. I hope that was as helpful for some of you guys as it has been for me. I believe that that grip and some of those cues that Connor and I talked about there have been pretty integral in my bench progress, as well as an important factor in keeping my shoulders healthy over the last little while. Um, if it helps you, let us know. Any comments, questions, leave them below. And leave a like on the video if you liked it, hit that subscribe button, etc. If there's anybody else you want us to try to get on this channel, let us know and we'll do our very best for you. We'll see you guys in the next video.